His question is, how do I manage my time with all the activities? I just get stressed and pass it on. <laughs> no, it's very simple as far as I'm concerned. First is, 95% of the time, I, at all times, keep in mind 95% of the time, that differentiation between what's urgent versus what's, what's important. So pretty much everything is important. We live under such extraordinary stressful times these days that everything is important. There is nothing you can say, I will do it next year. Those times are gone. Everything needs to be done like yesterday. But I don't let that get to me. I differentiate between urgent and important. So I only focus on what is urgent for me. Secondly, maybe the hard way, but I've learned to say no. Because if you don't develop the wisdom or the courage to say no, your yes will not mean anything to anybody then. So I've, I've learned to say, no, I cannot do this. The politeness often does not work. If you say no to somebody, sometimes because you're polite, and that's, I think, my greatest weakness as well. I cannot let go of my politeness. So sometimes if you say no to somebody, they will still come back to you, saying, maybe he wasn't loud enough, maybe. Maybe there's a chance. Maybe I can get another five minutes in a meeting or something. But I just stay course there. Most of the things that we end up doing in, in our lives, we don't need to. Anything that costs me time, I really think through. You want money, I have it, take it. You want my time, I need to know what you'll do with it. Two things I value the most in my personal life. And I try my best to do my best in terms of protecting and nurturing those two things. First, health, which includes physical health. And second, my time. I really don't like to waste my time. So 95%, if not maybe something like 99%, of invitations are turned down whether people are inviting me uh, uh, for conferences and this and that and the other, 95% of those events I turn down. Because it's very simple. Those events were being held when I wasn't speaking and everything was going just fine. Nothing's really going to change if I show up now. So it's not like they'll cancel the event, saying, oh, Om Swami is not coming, cancel. They will still go on. So unless I'm absolutely needed, I don't want to be there. I would rather give my time to people who come here to see me. So first is differentiation, that, that sense of, that discerning wisdom to know what is urgent versus what is important. Second is the courage to say no. It's very key. Third is persistence. In anything I do, I don't ever remember expecting quick results. When I start something, I take it as a given that it may take me years. But my job is to keep chiseling at it, keep, keep at it, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. And the most classic example I can give is my own blog. 
When I started writing in 2011, sometimes in one month, there would be 20 views in one month. But still, I wrote with the same fervor as I would write for 20,000 or 200,000 people. Because I thought 20 people, or maybe, maybe only four people read it and 20, there were 20 views. I said, these people are trusting me with their time. I must do justice. I must give my best. And that is the fourth point. Give your best. Mere persistence is not enough. You have to give your best. 95% attempt will perhaps yield 40% result. Half-hearted attempt is not going to yield any result. So you give your best. And fifth, I like to do one thing at a time. You have, uh, you know, if you've ever been to a supermarket and then you walk in with uh, such conviction, you know exactly what you're going to get. But a few minutes later, you're like a zombie in there, just roaming around, watching aisles, maybe I need this, maybe you just, just to buy something that's only a couple of dollars, you may spend 10 minutes just researching brands. Uh, what a senseless waste of time. If you walk in with a list, in fact, it's not me saying it's psychology. It, many studies have been done on that. People who walk into a supermarket with a shopping list in their hands spend much less time there and almost always never overspend. On the other hand, people who walk in thinking, I know what, I'm, what I will have, what I'm going to buy, but don't walk in with the list, they end up buying a lot more than they thought they would. Because you can't fight with those marketing geniuses that are sitting in those corporations. They know exactly where your eye level is. You will enter, they will put all the green stuff, the fresh fruits, the flowers right at the entrance. They want to draw you in. They will put milk and eggs at the, at the remotest corner. They want you to take a round. The, most people just walk in there to get milk. Pharmacy at the end, cigarettes right at the beginning. So they, they know they have studied the movement of millions of eyeballs to come at phenomenal conclusions. They have huge data intelligence working for them. Similarly, in this world of distractions, there are too many people vying for your attention. In fact, there's a very good book called The Attention Merchants. You may want to read it. How by the time somebody gets up, they've been bombarded with hundreds of messages. By the time you leave home and get to work, you might have seen anywhere between 500 to 5,000 ads. Hoardings, boards, on the radio, and just somebody wearing a shirt, t-shirt, you know, those logos and so on. So, with intense meditation, it has now become my second nature. Rest distractions don't really bother me. If they are, at any point in time, I'm fully conscious, okay, I'm choosing to waste my time right now. Not like right now, but <laughs> you get the idea. So usually that's, that mindfulness is very, very key. And it's not always the case, what I'm going to tell you now, but pretty much the world's most successful people have it. That is, they never compromise their mornings. Get your work done in the morning. So that clarity, how you want to structure your time is very key. Most people get up in the morning, they don't know what they plan to accomplish in that day. And then a day will go. But also, I'm not saying it's a really good habit either. 
a lot of people are very relaxed. If you live your life by task lists, you are not as relaxed. But a kind of self-discipline brings immense freedom as well. If you have that discipline in your life, you are free to do many more things as well. So those are some of the things that affect.